Welcome Taste Designs 107, I'm Yes in the car park, you're the kings and queens. Today what I for you guys is a Photoshop tutorial showing you how you can make your own YouTube banner. I haven't done this style before, but I don't really know the name of it. The difficulty for this one will be 3 out of 5 stars, the duration will be 15 minutes, and the tutorial preview is on screen now, and you can see my beautiful sexy face. I'm joking. I look shit. Let's get straight into it. Welcome to the desktop. This is where the magic happens. We're going to get straight into this tutorial by opening up Google and going down to a link so we can make our word cloud. So I found a link where it's like a generator online. I knew that there were these websites that did it and I've messed around with the settings to find the best ones that I like and yeah you just have to copy these settings so this link will be in the description below so the spiral it's going to be on spiral this one but you can do rectangular but i like to do this one for the scale i either like to do log n or just n um, either that or you can do root now for the font it doesn't matter just you have to know the font name that's installed onto your computer so such as i have arial as a font um, code I mean so there we've got that font you can do what's uh, whatever America captain is a font that I have um, I I think it's American captain no it isn't oh well and also for the main settings here two from 0 to 90 so I just get those angles really and I'll change this back to code and for I'll do number of words to 50 but you can do whatever ones you like like this one <coughs> it's up to you and you can also do one word per line and as soon as you've got it something like this and um, this is where you obviously put your text and yeah so then you just press download as a PNG, you right click and save the image as into a folder that you're comfortable with and then we get straight into the designing of the banner. So this is what the actual final banner also looks like just as a refreshment if you haven't seen the intro. If you tend to skip that stuff that's okay. I'm just going to group this one and it's going to be template. Okay and I'm going to hide it. So the first thing that I did to make this effect was grab up my shape tool in my case I'm going to be using the polygon tool you change the size of it to 3 and just do like a fill of whatever color so in this case it's going to be like a really dark gray so you go up here and you pick a dark gray okay and because of you have three sides and it's a polygon tool I polygon that's three sides is a triangle so once you drag click and drag out you should get a triangle and yeah so you have something like this and just move that triangle into place and we're just gonna make a random background now make sure that you have a fill that you're comfortable with I guess just saying it nicely yeah I think that one's a bit more appropriate or something like even yeah like that okay so then what we do is we press ctrl J press ctrl T to move them and we just start rotating them everything like that so you can do flip vertically and it's just like a giant jigsaw puzzle and then change the fill of it by pressing this icon again and then just bringing it up like let's just say from 0772088888 which is just like a really slight adjustment and you probably couldn't tell that one you also want no stroke. You can add on a white stroke if you'd like. It's really up to you, but there you go. So you have something like that. And then you can obviously press Control J, right click, flip vertically, size this one down a little bit, move this one into here, and continue to create the pattern. So um let's just be like a hey, shut up phone. Something like this and then you press ctrl j and you know 
you would continue. Now, this might look a bit too um, bright, you could say. Now, we you can mess around with the opacity and everything like that later. So, if you go to flip vertically, this one, and uh, change the fill of this one to more something dark. So, yeah. So, then you get all these different patterns. And then what I like to do once I get something okay for a decent amount of length, you can just do like that, I guess. Right click, do flip um, vertically. And then bam, you've got some really cool little patterns. And as I said, it doesn't really matter with the colors because um, you can change them in the uh, opacity later on so just let me do this sorry it's really hard to multitask i find okay so that's looking great so now we've got some patterns going on and if we um just select the top layer and hold shift and click the bottom layer so you'll shift click all those layers you right click and do rasterize layers and then press ctrl e and you can merge those all together now, if we press F for our moved um, rectangular marquee tool, press R for the rulers and just drag one ruler down on top like here, and also one ruler down on top like here. So this will be our guideline to cut, and then just use your rectangular marquee tool cut, and it should snap there like this, and we just have a selection like this. If you press Control Shift I, that will invert the selection, Make sure that this is selected and press delete and press control shift D and then you should be happy to go. The reason why we did that is because of now when we move this, it's just straight crop like that. You might notice that some of it was overhanging, even though it is covered by the top layers here with this cropping. It's so, um, I like to keep everything really nice and lined up. <coughs> so now with this layer, we're just going to double click on the name and rename the lane to triangles triangles background press enter on that one and with the opacity bring this one down to like 30 29 that's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with that one and obviously you can do get some really cool patterns going on with these like you can go wild but I'm not gonna spend too much time on this just because of not just because it's a tutorial, I just, with the backgrounds, um, you really try to emphasize your stuff on the subject, so your main text, not the background. So we're going to make a new layer above this one by pressing Control shift n pressing OK. <laughs> Go to Filter, Render, Clouds. But before you do that, make sure that your foreground color is back and your background color is white. And then Filter, Render, Clouds, or Control f and then with your opacity, um, you can bring this one right down. Now what we've done there is we've like created like something really meniscus, you could say. Or you could bring that opacity right up and then do overlay. And then you get something like this. And then bring the opacity even down like that. So you get some texture going on like this and yeah, you get something really special now. You can mess around with all the overlays. And for some reason, I'm getting a lot of noise, which I'm not really happy with. But I guess that's okay. So we're going to go to File, Open. And I have a white concrete texture. So if you like this one, go down to the description below because you'll be able to find it there. And just drag this onto here, something like this. And right click and do Overlay. And just bring your opacity down but I think that's okay with just the clouds even like there's a lot of noise I think it's okay so what I've gone and done is I've made some particles that you can use um, this is just like a really nice little haze I guess so just drag this layer onto your document there'll be a PSD file as named as assets and downloads yeah so you just download it there and you'll get these particles that I've got, gone away and made myself so yeah and as you can see there's these little little artifacts and everything like that on the screen the triangle background might be a little bit too strong so something like this 
is really impactful. How we're getting the differences in the colors of the triangles. Okay, so one last thing that I like to do is make a new layer by pressing Control Shift down above all these and bring up your rectangular micae tool. So then we just use the rulers as guidelines and drag out like this and make sure that you drag it out like that and you're gonna fill it in with a color so we're just gonna use a really bright color something like this purple in our case and bring up our bucket tool and fill that in press ctrl D to deselect that and then with the opacity pull it right down to like just like it's a really light little haze over it like it's just colorizing it that's the point of it so something like a 2 or a 1 and just so you can see it um, maybe this one is a little bit too strong so what you can do is also mess around with the fill <coughs> if the opacity doesn't give you enough range that you'd like so something like this 48 or something it just has to be really subtle like all the little subtle things in design really makes a big difference in the end see that little color change just gives that little bit of vibrance to the document so then you're gonna go to file open and open up your um, cloud so in my case I didn't end up having an appropriate um, paragraph that I could use for design and what the banner I wanted to be around so I just found a design picture like this which is relatively high resolution which is what you want and I'm gonna show you how you can edit your own word cloud if it's not a PNG so you can start editing it without using the um, magic wand tool so the first thing that I like to do is unlock the background layer make a layer below it so this is gonna be our cut it out layer <laughs> then you're gonna press on this layer um, just like press control um, press control I to invert it so this is gonna make all the colors all the blacks whites and all the whites blacks and so on with the grains. so it's literally gonna flip the colors and then if you go to normal and then go to screen you can um, like it'll punch screen basically gets rid of all the blacks so hopefully yeah so as you can see you can't see the backing anymore because of it's on the overlay screen which is really handy so we're just going to be using this with the overlay screen and that's a really nice little feature that you can use Okay, so <clears throat> so bring your um, word cloud into your document or banner template and just center it relatively like this. Press Control Shift Enter to finish that selection. Now I'm going to center this one so it's like that with my move keys a little bit. Just because of its irregular shape, if I press Control A and press second and fifth icon, yes, it's going to be dead center, but it's it's an irregular shape, so it won't look like that. Okay, so now what I've got is just that background, and then I'm going to go to the opacity and find an opacity that I like. So I'm going to be probably happy with 12%, but you don't have to be 100% positive. And then I'm going to press Control J around 25 times until I get the same color for all the text. And then I'm going to press Control E like a bunch of times, or you can just literally shift click all those and then go to normal screen. And then you've got like all them white and then you can bring down the opacity. Okay, sweet. Now I'm going to hide this layer really quickly. Press T for my text tool. Change the color that I'm typing with to black. And for the font, I'm going to be using Baybass. If you want Baybass as a font, you can down you can find a link in the description below where you can download it. And the font that I'm going to type out is Ace. And I'm going to hold Shift while I resize this by pressing Control T Shift. Hold Shift on the corners. Press Control Shift Enter, and you should have your text like this. Now you can turn back on your background for it and just relatively center your text. The way you like it on this okay so I think this is looking good and you can press ctrl T hold alt and shift 
to resize just from the center point. <coughs> Press Control Shift Enter. Right click on your text layer and go to Rasterize Type. And then with this um, text layer, you're going to press Ctrl J. And I forgot how like I really did this, but I'm just going to wing it. Um, Ctrl click the text layer. And go to your duplicated layer of the... Um, what's it called? Sorry, I'm lost for words. The word cloud, sorry. <laughs> and just bring up the opacity on this one really quickly. And then just press Control Shift I, and that will invert the selection from the ace. So you're just cutting that bit out. You'll see what I mean. And then just go to your duplicate and press delete. It's really simple. Press Control D to deselect. And then you can delete your text layer. And then bam, you've got something like this. And the great thing is that your text is all white and you can clearly see it, which is the main thing. Now, one thing that I would like to add is you can see that this this background layer like isn't the same and it's going to be really hard to get it like that unless you use the one tool or something else or another technique to cut it out. So like this, but it's it's going to be hard, I guess. Um, just let me think really quick quickly yeah there's no really other way to do it um so yeah that's gonna be that and then the last thing that we're gonna do is add in some lights to this so we're gonna make some a new layer by press control shift n bring up your brush tool and for the size i will be running 600 pixels and the hardness is going to be zero percent make sure that your foreground's color is set to white that's really important and then just click once or twice around the document and these are going to be your like feature lights i guess which is like affecting the scene okay and then you can go to the opacity of these lights and bring them down to like 37 and then bam you've got something like this and really we've done this in a really quick time and you get such a really simple effect. Now, if you like stronger particles, you can go and find them on Google. They're really not that hard to find. Just type in particle stock and you can get some really thick particles going and slap them on. And if you're making this for a client, don't forget to put on your signature and everything like that. Thanks guys for watching the tutorial. If you did learn anything from it or enjoy the video at any point in time, hit that like button and also subscribe for more daily content and yeah guys have a great day i'll see you in the next one peace